Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host today. Uh, you also see on the screen our two presenters for today who I'm going to introduce uh, momentarily. Just a few notes before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email from me, I'd say maybe an hour after the, the session ends, and you'll find a link to view the recorded webinar. Please share that in your organization. Due to the short nature of this webinar, uh, we are not planning on fielding questions. Uh, I'm sure today's uh, presenters would be more than happy to answer any questions offline. Well, a little bit of context for why we're here today. Today's webinar really came from uh, as a follow-up to the 2019 CADA Summit, which just took place uh, just a few weeks ago in Savannah, Georgia. Our friends at Kinexus were both sponsors and presenters at uh, the CADA Summit, and I was struck by their message uh, of technology as a solution to a problem which is different than some technology companies, which you'll hear a technology first mindset. So one conversation led to another, and, and here we are, uh, a webinar uh, organized by Kinexus and Lean Frontiers. And we've got two lean thinkers that I've come to respect over the years. This is actually the first time, I believe, uh, that I've met Mike. So uh, have met Mark on a few occasions in the past, but. It's great to have these two gentlemen with us. So let me introduce our presenters. First, we have Mark Graben, an internationally recognized consultant, author, uh, professional speaker, and an entrepreneur. He is vice president of improvement and innovation services for Kinexus and is an award-winning author. Mark's latest book is titled uh, Measures of Success, React Less, Lead Better, Improve More which I understand just came out in a paper book. Is that right, Mark? Paperback. It's going through the Amazon process and should be available any day now. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. I tried to follow that. So if you want to learn more about Mark or, or his uh, upcoming paperback book, you can uh, visit markgraben.com. We're also going to hear from Mike Wiersma, who is a continuous improvement coach at uh, Whirlpool, Whirlpool Corporation. Mike has over 14 years of experience in leading cultural transformations in both manufacturing and in service uh, across the globe. His passion is in helping people and organizations build systems and structures that achieve best-in-class uh, performance. So, gentlemen, for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Uh, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for having me attend. Uh, and on behalf of the Whirlpool Continuous Improvement Leads who, who helped put this together and, and uh, uh, we're just glad to sh be able to share our story with you today. Uh, so today is entitled uh, Simple CI. And, and so we're really subtitling it. How do we create this process and this method uh, that is easy for anyone and everyone to follow? And, and so before I jump into that, I just want to share um, some of the continuous improvement framework here at Whirlpool. So I, I joined Whirlpool about two, two and a half years ago. And they have a model here of uh, principles and rules, very similar to many organizations. <clears throat> uh, and the principles are in the house. And so the five principles of directly observing work as activities, connections, and flows. Uh, the principle around waste elimination, a uh, principle around problem solving, uh, and establishing the high agreement of what and how. And lastly, would be uh, creating this learning organization. And the rules uh, are really around how do we structure these activities? How do we connect all of our customers and suppliers uh, through specific flow paths? And then what's our way through uh, experimentation? And uh, what you'll find is that a lot of that is uh, based on uh, Steven Spears' work and, um, uh, and the Toyota production uh, model. Uh, what's different, though, is uh, actually this diagram on the right, as you think through an articulated path to maturity, uh, we're taking this approach of starting small, starting simple, in the, in the diagram, it, it's, it's showing systems and tools. And so there's a lot of systems and tools that go into these principles and rules. And so the idea being uh, we're going to select very few things 
uh, connect them together. And then our, our goal was really to gain better behavior and, and better experience and maturity over time, uh, as well as adding additional concepts and tools over time. And so as we move from the triangle uh, to the center um, Pentagon uh, type model, we're looking for um, more mature uh, versions of the simple CI approach and then adding in additional components as we get better, which uh, mm -hmm. as the arrow indicates, we're trying to increase the speed of this de development and deployment uh, in our work systems. And so our real main focus, the presentation is focused on this as well, but uh, is business process. And so we're using this model as our, our business process um, uh, model to drive improvement across the organization. Mm -hmm. so, so Mike, one question I have is, you know, how do you measure the pace of improvement in the organization? How do you measure the velocity of this deployment through the organization? <laughs> Yeah, um, and so the, the pace uh, is an observed behavior. And so as we start small and start simple, uh, we start understanding uh, what are the questions that they're asking? Um, they being uh, individual contributors, managers, uh, leaders, and, and really being uh, specific as to what does better look like? And then our ability to close those gaps um, faster. And so it's really a gap closure that we're trying to do as we start small, start simple, uh, move into more complexity and more uh, mature systems uh, when the teams are ready for it. So we're trying to go at the pace uh, of the learning uh, that is happening that is observed. Okay. <clears throat> And so this is a, a unique slide that uh, the team has come up with uh, that's really told the story of a business process. And so as the slide says, unlike manufacturing, business processes are rarely designed and people tend to treat every deliverable as unique and a disconnected piece of work. And when that happens, uh, we have uh, these three wastes we've, we've come to observe, which is knowledge loss, the reinvention loss, and an inefficiency. And so what the result is of these customer needs and requirements that come in is, is what we've coined the amorphous blob of undesigned work. And, and what happens in this undesigned workspace is we get a lot of interruptions, chaos, pain is felt, we have struggles, we, we're making mistakes, uh, which are resulting in those wastes that we, we talk about. And at the end, we, we either get lucky through some achievement of business results um, uh, but we also see they were achieved through emergency and workarounds. Uh, and we definitely see more meetings happening and heroic efforts uh, to accomplish uh, the deliverable that was needed. And in the end, we have individual contributors that are really just surviving the day and managers that uh, are great at firefighting. And as Deming says, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't really know what you're doing. And so the, the amorphous blob of undesigned work is, is the unintended um, the depiction of, of that uh, saying from Deming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I love that phrase, Mike, the amorphous blob of undesigned work. Um, it's a funny phrase. It's not funny when you see the effects of that. Um, unfortunately, I see this a lot in, in healthcare and other service sector settings where unfortunately the work has just evolved. It's just there. People are doing the best they can without there really being a design of the work. And it sounds like you're really trying to help address that. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's the uh, examples would be th things like processing a PO or buying something or submitting a paper uh, a report uh, or, or just how we engage a cu customer call and a customer request. Right. All of those things we're trying to move into a more a designed workflow uh, where we can actually do some problem solving on that. Um, so, <laughs> excuse me. So, Mike, so for the what, approach, what, yep. so you know, what, what what are you trying to what what is Whirlpool trying to accomplish with the simple CI approach? Yeah, so with, with Simple CI, um, you know, the journey over the past couple of years has been, um, you know, we see events, we see projects, 
we see uh, some spot improvements. Uh, we see engagement of individuals that are showing interest, uh, but may not have all the tools and capabilities. And so we started with the idea of just giving some of the individuals or all individuals a basic foundation of what, what is needed uh, just to begin the conversation around making improvements. And, and so we wanted to select, uh, now that we've gone through that discovery of, of these events and projects and, and just doing standard work or, or being able to write problem statements, we want to be able to select um, the small few amount of skills that impacts uh, the breadth of the people and the processes. And so what about simple CI can be a, applicable and approachable to everybody in the organization? Uh, where we have some ability to measure that progress. And at the end, we'll know we'll get some short-term results. Uh, but one of our goals is really to have the leaders own it and be able to cascade it and describe. So what is continuous improvement at Whirlpool? On the flip side, it, it does take more coaches and more coaches are needed to be able to, to make this, um, you know, happen throughout the organization. It may feel forced versus uh, discovered. Uh, and we know that we're only implementing pieces of, of a larger system. And so we have to at least accept that. Yeah. So looking at the diagram, Mike, are those four bars, the ability to create um, standard work to measure performance, uh, improve the standard work by eliminating waste, um, writing problem statements, are, are those some of the, the basic skills that you want people to at least have the basic level? Is that the... Yeah, we really discovered that um, those, those tools, those methods uh, are really foundational uh, across the organization. Um, they are probably more applicable to um, the standard business processes versus leadership or management system uh, processes. Um, we haven't necessarily discovered the value of, of documenting all of the management systems in the same way. Uh, but it was a starting point. Uh, but it wasn't where Simple CI uh, landed it is in where it's at today. And, but to get there, uh, we really had to move through the barriers to make it even more simple. And, and so the words like standard work and waste, it didn't necessarily resonate uh, all the way throughout the organization. And, and so we had to un uncover what are these additional barriers. Um, and so these are just 10 that we've discovered uh, that many organizations probably would be able to to resonate with as well. The things like I believe improving requires a, an expert or a continuous improvement leader. Right? <clears throat> Number two being I don't understand the language, uh, which is what I, I just explained a little bit of. Uh, we do see elements of my work is art or not a science, um, and so I, I can't apply it here. Uh, number four being, I just don't have the time. I, I'm so busy, I just don't have time to do it. Uh, number five, very similar, uh, where it's above and beyond my work. I already have a full day. Um, don't add this on to my day on top of the work that I'm already doing. Uh, number six is, I, so I really don't have any problems. I don't see how continuous improvement uh, could help me. Uh, and so I'm, I'm not going to engage in it at that point. And number seven would be if, if, if I improve, there's a risk, I'm going to, going to be out of a job. And because of that, I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at and I don't want to change my job. I like what I'm doing. And then the last two are, are somewhat linked together, which is um, it's not in my objectives. I'm not getting um, a personal rating in my organization because of my involvement. Uh, and I don't get recognized for improving as part of that either. And if I had to summarize these 10, um, why we couldn't get to Simple CI, it's, it's in our heart, it's in our head, and it's in our application or our hands. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Mike, these are, I mean, they, these are all really common challenges. Um, you know, again, a lot of this sounds like things I hear people say uh, in healthcare. And, you know, I mean, I think what I've seen over time, you know, we, we can identify these barriers, but I think what really matters is, you know, trying to help people work through these barriers, trying to address them instead of um, hiding behind these barriers or letting them become excuses. So I'm curious to hear more. What are some of the ways that you try to help coach people through these barriers or find can you find countermeasures 
for these barriers? Yeah, so as we moved into the simple CI model, um, that was really uh, the design framework that we, we were trying to build is the answer to that question of, of what would make it so appealing, what would make it so easy that I don't have those excuses. And so we had these seven things that uh, we, we used to create this recipe uh, for CI. And, and so we said, we, we really need to get it down to the 12 year old level, right? Can, can a 12 year old do continuous improvement? Um, the design or the, the, the architecture behind it, it must be applicable everywhere. Uh, and it must be scalable, right? So it must be scalable at the, at the frontline work and it must be scalable uh, all the way up to our, our senior leadership. Um, early on, we need to make it easy to capture and share. And if, if we don't have that speed of, of sharing uh, and the ease of capturing, uh, the conversation stalls. Uh, we also want to be able to say, for those people that are working uh, remote uh, or have a team in front of us, uh, we need to be able to apply it to my job, both individually and as a team, and then also provide a digital or manual option to do this, uh, given the challenges of remote work, especially with business process. And lastly, if we know if, if it's not fun, uh, it's not going to resonate and it's going to be skipped over. And so it really, um, we really wanted to drive on these seven design principles. And, and so we take the previous slides and we move it into this idea of make everything visible identify the waste and problems and run your next experiment as really our recipe. Um, through iterations though, we've also identified that sometimes waste and problems are not the right term. An experiment also got in the way. Uh, we just want people to capture their, their daily struggles and to try out some ideas. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we're asking that question. So is it simple enough? And we keep iterating uh, around this. Yeah, I mean, I think you know that's a good example of using continuous improvement cycles um, to to iterate, to test language, to see what resonates, to get input from people. And you know, I, I know you're going to talk um, here about finding the balance between manual and digital options for capturing and, and sharing um, mm -hmm. ideas. But I was wondering if you can share an example um, of of making improvement, making simple CI fun. Yeah, um, so ma making it fun, um, you know, an example here is this, this is a group um, that is working through their simple CI uh, using those, those three criteria, and, and we're bringing in different models to make it happen. And so we've brought in the Shingo model, we've brought in agile frameworks and tools, the Kata methodology, and some simple mapping techniques, to hopefully articulate um, through the use of color and the dynamics of team collaboration uh, to to generate uh, ideas uh, around our struggles uh, for a given purpose. And so you'll see in this poster the idea of of setting, uh, allowing the team to set a challenge out there and articulate what does good look like um, in uh, six months from now, for example. And enforcing the forcing team members uh, or leaders to be able to articulate their thinking on a sticky note, um, as simple as a sticky note, is is really the the level of detail that we're trying to to start with, uh, because a sticky note is used every day uh, in in most business processes, either for taking notes or for other reasons. Um, and so, being able to facilitate both our long term goals, our current conditions, our target conditions. In gray here, you'll see uh, the idea of just being able to articulate a process in six steps. You, you know, so it's any process, any method uh, we can articulate uh, in six steps. And then <clears throat> allowing the team to brainstorm around just what are all the, the pink, what's all the red sticky notes uh, that are important for us to, uh, to be considering before we generate ideas and jump to solutions. And so as we force this thinking, the, the idea of doing it together, collaborating, the idea of simply putting content down on a sticky note 
and then having a structure in place to drive and meet um, daily uh, to accomplish some of the, the work that's going on and visually displaying it um, is actually very engaging. So you've got all these different frameworks and you've, you've <clears throat> talked about simplifying the language, but do you have other examples of, of trying to make sure um, that this, this evolution and, and building the, this, this approach to different methodology, how, how do you make sure that it, it, it gets more simple or that it stays simple instead of becoming yeah. more complex? So th this, this is version uh, four of, I think, 10 now of this, uh, this poster that we've created. And, and as we've created it and, and used it not only at work, but at our homes uh, to test it out and see if it, it works, uh, we've, we've found that the questions that we ask, the prompting of these questions and simplifying these langu the language uh, within those statements and then actually allowing the re a reasonable amount of space to, to write your thinking uh, is actually driving those behaviors of, of being able to capture and, and drive uh, some improvements uh, within a, a good time box. And so we have this routine of two weeks to four weeks that we're really developing uh, to go and see, are we making progress to our long-term challenge? Uh, but manual is not the only way uh, to be able to do this. Uh, this works very well if, if you have teams together, if you have uh, a time and space where you're meeting, uh, but not everybody has uh, is able to capture their problem at their desk or by a sticky note. And not all sticky notes stick for a long period of time, uh, say six months, and so you end up with um, tool challenges as well. And so when we, as we considered how do we do this uh, remotely and how do we accomplish the same behavior uh, electronically, um, looking at into Kinexus as a, as a way to answer that question. Um, Whirlpool's been using Kinexus for a couple of years um, in various facets. And as we redesign towards a simple CI deployment, um, a, a simple form like this, uh, makes it extremely easy to capture someone's thinking wherever they are. And so just being able to capture a problem or capture an idea or both um, and actually provide a short brief description of why it's important is something that's very easy to do. And, and it doesn't, it replicates the idea of the pink and yellow sticky notes uh, at the bottom uh, of the manual board. And as you think through what, what does, uh, if we connected that actual board together uh, and not just have a random idea or a random struggle captured, but actually put this towards a service that I'm working on and, or a map or a process, six steps of, of how that process works. Um, this is the other screen capture of how we're approaching um, automating uh, that poster uh, to drive at actually executing that model. And so we allow for uh, every box on that poster has a place on the screen capture uh, and allows the team to, to actually work through their recipe for CI digitally. And so can you maybe share some examples, Mike, of you know what are some circumstances or situations when the board, the, the, man, the, the analog board, if you will, the post-it notes are helpful in times when um, using Kinexus as a web-based platform is uh, more helpful and more appropriate. Yeah, uh, so what, what I've discovered, what we've discovered um, is tactile learning is, is very important to learn method, to learn uh, behavior, to, to be able to actually see things moving, um, there's value in that. Um, uh, but when you start trying to scale this uh, at a global level, uh, and you know, Whirlpool is a very large organization, sticky notes uh, don't move too fast through the mail. They don't move from board to board and without losing their stickiness. Um, th there are always hurdles um, in the capture 
And there's definitely hurdles with the reporting as well. And so when we start trying to be able to, to validate the improvement work and, and count the amount of impact that we've actually made, uh, we're finding that we can actually save time through other platforms uh, than the sticky note exercise. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, one other question, you know, you talked earlier about creating the need for more coaches in the organization. What are some things that you found that are helpful in coaching the coaches, developing the coaches in other ways? Yeah, so as we're developing coaches, um, I, you know, early on, it is the tactile learning of, of actually um, doing this in a safe environment. And so we've used the Kata to Grow activity uh, and we've simplified that down even to a five minute exercise just to get people thinking about the challenge, current condition, target condition, obstacles. Um, you, know, you know, so we're, we're finding many different uh, either kids games or puzzles or, or work examples um, where the model, whether it's through the poster or a handwritten example of the poster, well, we can actually share stories to generate uh, the common language and the discussion to keep the momentum going. Mm -hmm. Cool, and, and maybe final final topic here. Speaking of kids, um, what, what are some of the ways, you know, how have you used simple CI methods at home? Yeah. Um, so a couple of funny stories, but uh, you know, so for that that poster that we we observed earlier, um, just taking uh, for example my family through it, uh, we we've filled out uh, a couple different posters now, uh, one for planning vacations, uh, another one for buying a car, and we're almost through the the kind of uh, the coaching challenge um, of getting my two and a half year old out of diapers, and so we've we've met the first target condition. Uh, we're on. We have another one at least to go uh, until we're at, we're done with that one. Well, great. Well, Mike, you know, on behalf of the team at Kinexus, you know, for one, thanks for being a customer, and, and secondly, thank you for um, sharing some of the approaches that you're using um, in your setting there at Whirlpool. So, if you've got um, final thoughts or, or Dwayne, if you have um, also things you want to say to help wrap up. Yeah, I. I uh, just wanted to say, uh, Mark and Mike, thank you both, not only for today's presentation, but for really being thought leaders. Uh, certainly greatly appreciate your ongoing contributions to uh, this lean body of knowledge. Um, again, if you are interested in learning more about Mark's book, uh, Measures of Success, you can visit markgraben.com. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about Kinexus, our partners in bringing you this webinar, you can visit kinexus.com, K-A-I-N-E-X-U-S.com. I'd like to thank uh, not only Kinexus, but specifically uh, Jeff Russo for participating in the, the Kata Summit uh, a few weeks ago, not only as a sponsor, but as a presenter. Uh, Jeff did a, a great presentation on the importance of technology in, in today's world and uh, tied it in nicely for the Kata community. So, and finally, if you're interested in learning more about Lean Frontiers and the variety of learning products that we have for the Lean community, you can visit leanfrontiers.com. There you're going to find uh, events like the TWI and Kata Summit in Europe, uh, as well as the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange. Both of those events, which take place in Malmo, Sweden, uh, you'll also see, for instance, the uh, Lean Coaching Summit. I know coaching kind of came up here in, uh, Mike, some of your, your conversations. So the Lean Coaching Summit that we run in, in uh, conjunction with uh, Lean Enterprise Institute. So thank you, uh, Mike, Mark. Thank you to everyone who thank participated you. in today's session. And hopefully uh, we'll get to meet you at some point uh, down the road at one of our summits. Thanks right. again. Thank you very much. All right. Look forward to seeing you there again. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.